everyone, welcome to another video with um, me, Ariella Anderson. I am going to be your teacher today. Um, we're going to work on balance and foot strength today. So it's going to be a little bit of a different class. We're going to do a warm up and then we're going to spend um, some time just working on balance postures. Um, balancing is really great. It's really great for feeling grounded. It's really great for focus. Um, and any kind of uh, standing balance posture actually really helps with uh, foot strength and the great thing about working on foot strength is that you can kind of take the balance out of it by using a chair um, or a wall or something else that um, helps um, take kind of the, the balance part out of it and you can just work on the foot strength. So you don't need to feel like if your balance is off today because balance is different every day. Sometimes you feel more balanced in the morning, sometimes you feel more balanced in the evening. Um, sometimes you have allergies and your sinuses are bothering you and you know you just feel really foggy in your head and your balance is totally off um, but so just like with any practice every day is a little bit different and that is especially true for balance um, so for this class I definitely recommend either setting up near a wall if you have one or grabbing a chair I grabbed this chair from the corner and I'm going to kind of use it throughout um, you know throughout talking through the balance postures today and um, maybe also a pair of blocks or something to put your hands down because we're going to be doing tree and warrior three um, but as with any class all of these are suggestions so if it's none of these postures are your jam like just skip them like that's fine um, with um, with your practice you should take what you need leave what you don't you know take the benefits leave the rest and um, just enjoy yourself and feel you know the movement in your body um, and so with that we're gonna start standing we've actually started standing uh, a couple of for a few classes um, oh and the last thing that I will say so we are gonna do some sun salutations today I am not gonna go through all of the variations of sun salutations um, I just put out a video um, on Wednesday that um, should have all of the different variations of sun salutations and flow throughs that you can go through. So I'm just gonna do um, very basic, um, you know, most common variation for it, and then definitely be sure to watch that video um, to see all the different ways that you can, um, you can do your flow, flow through. Um, and it will have a little, you know, has a little something for everybody. And I believe if I remember, because time means nothing these days, I believe my last video, um, last week actually had quite a bit of the variations for sun salutation. So if you want, you know, rewatch those videos, get all that, email me, that's fine. Um, but we're just gonna kind of roll through the regular, um, the regular, but like the most common variations of sun salutations in class. So, um, and final reminders as I finally stop talking. Uh, remember there's gonna be no music with this class, so sync up your favorite playlist so you can listen to you wanna listen to, not what I wanna listen to. And um, if you plan on sitting for Shavasana, uh, remember that I will prep you for Shavasana, but I will not lead you through and out of it. So if you want to stay in Shavasana, uh, be sure to turn the autoplay off on YouTube. So, again, with that, we're gonna to come to standing, and since we're gonna be doing a lot on our feet, we're gonna start on our feet. We're gonna start in mountain, uh, which is a very, very um, fundamental and actually kind of tough yoga posture because it requires just to be grounded and calm. So you can bring your feet to wherever they feel comfortable, whatever distance apart they feel comfortable. If that's a little bit wider, you can do that. If you like to keep them together, you can do that too. You, want, you can close your eyes, or you can just keep your gaze soft. You can look at the tip of your nose, or you can look at a spot on the floor. Your hands can be facing out, and your hips or your thighs, whatever you'd like. Take a deep breath. And roll your shoulders back and down on your exhale. If your eyes are closed, you might start to feel your body sway a little bit. That's okay, that's normal. If it feels a little disconcerting, you can just open up your eyes. Just feel your 
chest rise and fall as we begin to mentally arrive on your mat. Maybe start to feel your feet on the mat or on the floor or towel or carpet or whatever you're using, whatever's under your feet. Maybe you're like, think about them and think about how it feels. Feel all of your toes grounding into the mat. Feel your heels, the outsides of your feet. What does it feel like? Just bring your awareness to your feet and all these sensations underneath you. Maybe see how your ankles feel, your knees, are your knees locked? If they're locked, just kind of relax them a little bit. If you're feeling tense, maybe you're squeezing your butt a little bit or Take a big breath, just relax in your exhale, no need to be tense. And as part of your practice is an intention, it's a thought or an idea to focus on or work towards, I invite you to do so. And when you're ready, open up your eyes if they're Close, and if you want, maybe you can adjust your feet a little bit, sway a little bit, you know, move your hips around, you can do some hip circles here. Just try to get some movement into your body, you can make them real deep hip circles. This is especially good if you're if you're pregnant and you're watching this video, you know, it'd be really great to just kind of like move your hips and just move your body. We're gonna back to center inhale arms come up overhead reach nice and tall and when you do just kind of keep your shoulders away from your ears just reach nice and tall chest is lifted and then release back down to your hands to heart center back to your sides inhale reach nice and tall chest is lifted and release. This time we're going to bring both of our hands up and then on our exhale we're going to bring our left arm down and the right arm is going to reach over for a nice side stretch reaching through your hands and look up towards the ceiling down towards the mat or straight ahead whatever feels most comfortable in your body. And release. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, right arm comes down, left arm comes up and over. So I said, you don't want to start to dip forward like this. You want to try to bring the shoulder back while you're reaching over. And this might mean that you only come here instead of like all the way down here, and that's okay. And release. We'll do that one more time on each side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, reach over. And release. One more time on the other side. Inhale. Exhale, reach over. side, right arm, left arm to the front, right arm to the back. Even when I'm teaching alone, I get my right and left mixed up. Inhale. Now we're going to inhale our arms up and on our exhale, cactus out your arms. You can take a back bend here if you like, engaging your glutes, pressing them forward. Now, 
We're going to take a forward fold here. So if you want to take a wider forward fold, you're more than welcome to. So inhale, exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips. Come all the way down nice and slow. First forward fold might be kind of tight. Our hamstrings might feel a little bit tight. So if it feels better to kind of open up your feet, you can do that. Um, this is also good if you're pregnant, you can make room for your body. This is where your blocks can come in handy. If your hamstrings are tight, you can bend your knees or you can just raise the ground up off your feet, use your blocks. So find your placement to where this forward fold feels right in your body. And when you're in your forward fold, remember that you can bend your knees as much as you need, but kind of keep your hips lifted. So lift from your hips and you'll really, you may feel that in your um, hamstrings. And that's how you protect your back. If you are a gardener like me, it's a great practice to have because when you are gardening and you're bending over and you're weeding, if you can bend from your hips and keep your hips lifted and not bend from your back, it doesn't hurt as much. Lay your head, hang heavy. If you want to take ragdoll here, I invite you to. Maybe you open up your feet a little bit wider and you take each elbow in your, each hand or opposite hand and just sway side to side. And we're going to slowly come back up. So if your feet are together or are wide, bring them together by heel toeing them. And then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Good, coming up last. We get to the top, inhale, shrug your shoulders, exhale, bring them down and back. Awesome. So now we're going to do our sun salutations. I'm going to bring my blocks. I'm going to do my sun salutations with my blocks today. Maybe not the first one, but for the rest, for the end of it. So if you are, so come to the top of your mat. So we're going to do this a few times. Um, maybe we're going to start out nice and slow and then we'll kind of um, pick it up a little bit. Um, I, out of habit, I was probably, I'm, gonna, I'm trying not to use breath cues as much, um, but it is habit. I've been doing it for a very, very long time. So it's going to take some time for me to break that habit. But just know that um, breath cues are a guide and they are not, you know, dogma. So you can, you know, if the breath cues are not working for you, just how you breathe, just breathe. That's the important thing, okay? So don't stress yourself out with the breath cues, but um, they are, I've always found them to be helpful as a good guide, and that's not the case for everybody, but I offer them for those who wanna um, follow them. So we're gonna do this on salutation a couple times. Take it any way that you need to do your variation, whether I do it or not. Start at the top of our mat, inhale, arms come up overhead, exhale, forward fold, letting your head hang heavy. Your hands can come to the mat, they can come to your blocks or your shins for support. Inhale, halfway lift with a flat back, exhale, release. We're going to do that two more times as we continue to warm up our spine. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, plant your hands, step yourself back to plank. I'm gonna take this first one on my knees. So I'm gonna untuck my toes, core is engaged, belly button to spine, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, and on your exhale, Bend your elbows, so your elbows are heading back towards your feet, chaturanga. And then inhale, rest your chest up for cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, come back up to plank. I'm gonna come up to my knees to start. On your exhale, up to downward facing dog. Inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, walk, step or hop. 
into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rise up. Hands touch at the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, we're going to take that a little bit more quickly. Inhale. Fold. Half lift just once and release. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And release. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Look between your hands. Travel to the front of your mat. Half lift. And fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale. dog. Look between your hands. Forward fold. Half lift and release. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center one last time. Inhale, exhale, fold. Look between your hands. Forward fold. Half lift. Release. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right. So now we are all warmed up. <coughs> grab, grab a drink if you'd like. Now we're going to do our balance. So I'm going to bring this chair. I'm bring this chair closer to me. And we are going to start by coming back to wherever you feel comfortable on your mat. So if you want to come to the front of your mat, to the middle of your mat, if you want to come off your mat, you can do that too. Um, if you are working in a carpeted area, someplace that is really soft, know that softer places and softer surfaces underneath your feet might make balancing a little bit harder. So if you want to, whatever you're using, if you want to take like your phone or your iPad or whatever and bring it over to like your kitchen or your bathroom or someplace with a, um, like a tiled or wooden surface, like you can do that too. It's totally up to you. I personally use two mats, so sometimes I find it more beneficial for me to move off my mat. So tree is one of the more basic balance, um, standing balance postures. But it's really versatile and then just because it's one of the more fundamental ones doesn't mean that it's easy. So we're going to come back to our mountain. Feet however distance apart, whatever makes you comfortable. If you want to do two fists width distance it's usually pretty comfortable for, for most people but if it's not for you take it a little bit wider. Or if you like having your feet together, that's okay too. Shoulders back and down. We're going to come back to finding our grounding. Feeling the ground underneath our feet. It's a good one to do outside. 
press underneath your feet. Maybe you want to sway back and forth and just feel the ground underneath your feet. Sway back and forth. Sway forward and back without picking up your toes or your heels. Just feel. So now, um, I'm notoriously bad at balancing while teaching. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use the chair. So to come into our first tree, we're going to bring our weight into um, our left foot. <laughs> we're going to bring our weight into our left foot and we're going to turn out our right knee. Now come up onto your toes. Now you can take your tree wherever you'd like. So you can take a kickstand version of your tree where your toes stay flat, your heel is on your ankle. And this is great. This is perfect. If you feel like you've been having some better balance, you can bring your foot either above or below your knee. Um, I have been reading that you can actually keep your foot on your knee, but try not to really like, don't push your foot into your knee to provide that balance. Like it really just should be like resting there gently. And if you can't rest it there gently, then just either keep it above or below. So this is usually where I'm pretty good, but you can also take your foot, like I'm happy today. You can take your foot to the inside of your thigh. And if you're using the chair, you can kind of just hang out here. And this right here, if you're using a wall or a chair for balance, this is really strengthening your feet right now. Strengthening your feet is strengthening your ankles, strengthening your hips. This is doing a lot. If you're adding the balance to it, you can keep your gaze about four or five feet in front of you on a drift seat or a focal point, and your hands can be heart center. You can grow your branches. Yeah, so whatever you kind of feel like, you can play with it if you want. Why don't you come out of it? I'm fine. I'll have good balance days and bad balance days. It's been quite a while since I've done tree. Now, one of the key things here is it's really common for us to want to like kick out like our standing hip. The goal is to keep your hips, <clears throat> to keep your hips level. So don't kick it out here, keep them level. And you'll see there's a big difference there. So you might want to keep your hands on your hips so you can kind of feel if you're kind of sinking into it a little bit. Play with that, play with it a little bit. When you're ready, you can come out. You can do a couple of hip circles here, like I'm doing. You can pause this if you want to spend more time in it. You can absolutely pause this. And we'll do the other side. So I'm going to slide my chair over here. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. So we can come back into our mountain. If you want to go through the grounding, you absolutely can. If you don't, that's okay too wherever you are, start to bring the weight into your right foot this time, turn out your left knee. And now again, same option. So you can bring your heel to your ankle, you can bring the bottom of your foot to your calf, or you can bring it to the inside of your thigh. If you've got a chair here, you can stay here. Like I said, you are doing lots of work to strengthen your feet, which are really, really underappreciated. We're going to try to keep our chest open. Even if you're looking at a drifty, try not to sink forward. Keep that spine long. And again, now you might find that you are better balanced on one side than you are the other. So as soon as I took my focal, my focus away from my drifty, it started going over. Um, so,
you might find that your balance is better on one side than it is the other, and that side might not be the side that you are, that you would expect. You might think that your balance is better on the right side because you're right-handed, and you might find that your balance is actually better on the left, and that's totally normal. <coughs> so, you can play with that. Shake it out, do some hip circles here, and then we're gonna move into warrior three if you like. Um, you absolutely do not have to go into warrior three. You can continue to work on um, tree. You can fast forward to our cool down, whatever you wanna do. Um, Warrior three, I'm gonna come, so I am sideways. I'm gonna keep my blocks here because I wanna put my hands on my blocks. Now, to start, I'm gonna bring my weight into my left foot. I'm gonna raise up my right knee, okay? So now you can stay here, and this right here has a lot going on, a lot of Foot strengthening, a lot of ankle strengthening, a lot of balance. So you can stay here, or you can start to, I didn't measure this out clearly. You can start to bring your raised foot back. And this is where you can use that chair to help with balance. I'm relying on it quite a bit right now. Or you can bring your hands blocks. And the objective for warrior three is keeping those hips, again, keeping those hips level. You know, we have a tendency to want to kind of open one of our hips or to try to, because if we open up our hip, we can usually get our leg higher up. And everybody thinks that getting their leg higher up is like the goal, but it's really not. So if you're, you know, twisting your body to get your leg higher up so it looks a certain way, you're not really meeting the objective of the posture. So keeping your, keeping your hips level, which is a challenge. I really don't like this posture, to be perfectly honest with you. I find it very, very difficult to keep my hips level. So you can use your chair here, or hands at heart center, you can bring them out. Warrior three is not gonna happen for me today. That's okay, maybe it'll happen for me tomorrow. But you can play with that. You can use different, um, different props, different tools. And then when you're ready, we'll take it onto the other side. So now, bring the weight into your right foot, raise your left leg, and again, you can stay here, like this right here, you've got a lot happening, a lot of balance, a lot of hip and foot strengthening, and when you are ready, you can kick it forward, keeping those hips level, you can use your chair, you can use your blocks, combination of both. center, you can shake out your hips a little bit, you can shake out your legs. Perfect. Yeah. So now for our cool down, we're going to make our way back down to our mat. Keep your blocks away. So for our cool down, we're going to do a bit of an intense um, foot stretch. Um, in my prenatal training, we call this discomfort training, if that tells you anything about how intense this is going to be, but we are not gonna use it as discomfort training, we're just gonna use it as a nice foot stretch. So come onto your knees, and you bring your hands down, so kind of you're coming into kind of a loose tabletop. Then tuck your toes under, okay? And then 
try to make sure that, you know, all our feet are different, but see if you can kind of get all of your toes um, to be on the mat. So now our toes are tucked, and slowly start to bring your weight into your hips onto your heels. Now you might start to feel that stretch quite a bit, quite quickly. And let's just take it wherever, wherever you want. If, if keeping your hands down, you can use blocks here. You know, whatever you want to do. If you want to take a full stretch and come up, that's fine. So just kind of take it where you are. You'll find that you might feel like, ah, this isn't so bad. And then if you're hanging out here, it starts to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. But once it starts getting a little bit too intense, Take the weight off of your heels, bring your hands down, untuck your toes, and just kind of tap them out. Yeah. And if you want, you can do it again. Yeah. Now that maybe now that you know how it works, you don't go as deep. I'm going to come facing you guys. You can come into whatever um, direction feels right. Find your sit bones. Keep your feet out. <clears throat> you can keep them a little bit wider if you like, or you can keep them straight out in front of you. Whatever feels best in your body. Inhale, arms come up overhead. Exhale, tip forward. Reaching for whatever you can. Using a strap around your feet if you need. You can take off your feet, your ankles, whatever. coming back up and then bring your bottoms of your feet to touch coming into bound down angle or bakanasana um, find your sit bones again inhale lengthen exhale tip forward at your hips chest coming down towards the floor you can always put blankets or blocks underneath your knees if you need a little bit more support and you don't like them just kind of hang in there. And release. And if you're a person who's not totally grossed out by your feet, I know that there are plenty of people who just don't even like their own feet, but our feet did a lot for us today and they do a lot for us every day. So maybe just take some time um, you can pause this if you want and just give yourself, give your feet a little bit of love. Um, rub your feet, take your thumbs and rub them in your arches and on your toes. And maybe you have like um, myofascial release balls that you want to use. And just take a little time to just rub your feet. Um, I know it usually feels better when somebody else does it. Um, if you're not one of those people who are grossed out by feet. Um, but just... You kind of never really realize that, like how much your feet do for you and um, where they take you. So uh, it's good to kind of give them a little bit of love sometimes. And whenever you're ready with that, if you want to pause and hang out for a little while, you can do that. Or whenever you're ready, you can come into your Shavasana posture. So if you want to come down on your back, you have a couple of options. Um, that I find most comfortable. So, if you, traditional posture would be um, corpse pose. And if this is not too comfortable, like if you have a deep arch in your back um, and this isn't comfortable on your lower back, you can bend your knees, walk your feet out towards the edge, but bring your knees in. So, you've got like a triangle from the points of your knees down and this is great because it allows you to keep your knees bent but you don't have to think about keeping them up so it kind of like uses gravity in your favor you can prop yourself up in a future video i'm going to show you how to use bolsters to prop yourself up during your shavasana to make it more restorative um, but wherever you need to be during your shavasana i allow you some time um, to I'm kind of weird after I said it, but um, I encourage you.
encourage you to um, get into whatever posture feels comfortable. Maybe it's seated with your back up against the wall. But wherever you are, if you're going to settle into Shavasana, start to come into your mat. Feel your body touch whatever surface it's sitting in or laying down in. And take a deep breath. In and inside out. A lot of great work today. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey, the lightning, the honors, the lightning. Thank you so much.